Welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host, Definition, aka your insider on the outsider. In this video, we're breaking down episode 7 of the show. Last week ended on a big cliffhanger, and this episode definitely feels like one of the most tense yet. We're going to be going over the entire entry as a whole and giving our thoughts on it. There will be heavy spoilers here, so if you don't want anything potentially ruined, then I highly recommend that you turn off now. With that out of the way, thank you as always for clicking the video. Now let's get into our breakdown of The Outsider, Episode 7. Okay, so Episode 7 centres around Holly and where we left her last week. The episode does an excellent job of making us think that she's on the highway to hell, and whilst she comes out of it okay by the end, the 50 minute long ride really has you fearing for her safety at points. The entry itself has a feeling of people being doomed to their fate, and this is exemplified in the opening shots when we see a cockroach sprawled on its back. This signifies a lot throughout the episode, and it can be applied to several characters. When a cockroach has had its nervous system compromised because of insecticide, the creature will often flip onto its back and have spasms. It's pretty much a death sentence for the roach, as it's very unlikely that it will ever return to its upright position. It is possible that it will, but oftentimes the cockroach is stuck like this until it dies. Instantly, this can be applied to Jack, who is now 100% connected to the outsider, and should Holly survive, she will bring this to people's attention. Jack has gone fully off the deep end, and is unlikely to come back to his normal, upright position, and at points similar to the cockroach, he himself ends up in the woods scrambling on his back. From the roach, we cut to Ralph in his bed on his back, and then he sits upright. Ralph's belief in the rational has impeded the case and left him unaccepting of the truth behind it. Many police officers before him have too been solid in this mindset, and thus El Cuco has been able to continue its killing spree for centuries. Similar to the cockroach, they have been stuck in a position, unable to move, but what's interesting about this shot with Ralph on his back is that he sits up. This shows that he may have broken free of being stuck and is now willing to progress on the case with an open mind. Though he's still not fully on board, there are hints throughout the episode that he's slowly starting to come around. Keeping an open mind pretty much became a catchphrase in the source material, and personally, I believe that's what's represented here. It's a beautiful introduction, and I can't believe I've spent over a minute talking about something that happens over about the space of three seconds. This hope of Ralph coming around is quickly squandered though when he tears down sketches of the creature. I believe that these may be put up in the future to signify his acceptance of the supernatural, and this episode is very much about him beginning to believe. Jack does tell a joke about how many shrinks it takes to change a light bulb, and he says that it's only one, and that it's the light bulb that really has to want to change. This highlights that Ralph can do it, but he has to want to. It's not long before he realises that Holly has been kidnapped, and Ralph could also have other big problems on his hands. We learn that Glory could be contemplating soon the police department, and though she initially states that she doesn't really want to, this mindset changes throughout the episode. We also see that they finally found a nanny that wasn't a reporter, and she's returning to work. So she has turned to an upright position, however she quickly flips back over and becomes stuck when she berates clients and we realise that 3 weeks was probably too soon to return to work. She gives a strange pitch to them, and uh, it's a bold one, I'll admit, but uh, you son of a bitch, I'm in. It really seems like she wants to be as far away from the case as possible and not sue the police department, but after being said to be broke, she changes her mind and decides to go ahead with it. We then finally cut to Holly and Jack, and the tension is at fever pitch. Jack spews dialogue about how he didn't really believe in anything growing up, but now he does since encountering the outsider. He doesn't even seem like he's hiding anything, and instead this car ride early on even sounds like a therapy session. He spouts about how the creature is endless and could date back to before the Big Bang, and how there may even be others. Holly did state last week that the creature wasn't of this world, and because of this we guessed it could be from another dimension, or from space similar to Pennywise. Both Pennywise and El Cuco feed on emotion, and can shapeshift, and it is possible that they are both millions of years old. We do know from King's work that there are also others out there like it. Jack feels like he's the dominant one here, and this is why he doesn't mind confessing to Holly. It seems like he wants to work with her, but every time he does, the rash flares up. He asks why El Cuco chose him, and it is said that it focuses on people who are dealing with loss and pain. As mentioned earlier, it feeds on emotion, and where Pennywise fed on fear, El Cuco feeds on grief and despair. 
Jack, as we know, lost his mother recently and his wife left him, and this is why he was in a vulnerable position that enabled him to be chosen. We've theorised that Claude will be the next target, and this is given weight here when we see him losing his job because of the fight at the strip club last week. He's clearly a man down on his luck, and we already know that El Cuco is transforming into him due to the fact that when it was Terry, it cut him. El Cuco operates by cutting someone, and then from this it takes their DNA and is able to mimic their appearance. We know the monster is currently going through a transformation, and as Claude has just been let go, it provides the outsider with the perfect victim. The manager does say later in the episode that he quit, but it doesn't really come across like that. I could imagine that should Claude be found as the suspect of a crime, that many would hold this job loss against him as something that could have pushed him over the edge. Later in the episode, Holly confirms that Claude is the next victim, and there is a ticking clock against him that I'll talk about at the end of the video. Ralph and Pelly discover Jack's room, and see that there's blood everywhere because of the fight that he had with his mother. Instantly, they assume that he's kidnapped and killed Holly, and they manage to track the two using their phones. Colin says that she's transferring from the department due to life being easier out of the way of the murders. Holly does the old, I need the toilet trick, and the tried and tested method of getting out of something nearly works, but Jack asks more questions, and then she uses the next in line excuse of having a period. God knows, saying, I'm on my period has gotten me out of some tight situations. Am I right, girls? She even tries to climb out of the bathroom window, and clearly Jack hasn't seen, well, anything other than a strip club dance before. She manages to get away, and Ralph and Pelly have a similar conversation to Holly and Jack about the supernatural. Pelly discusses his childhood in which he encountered something strange in the woods, but Ralph shrugs it off, showcasing he refuses to believe. In the woods, Jack puts a gun in his mouth but can't pull the trigger, and he ends on his back, sprawling around much like the cockroach at the start. Holly makes it back to Ralph's, and she discusses what's been going on. There's confirmation that the outsider only feeds on children, and that Jack may have wanted to take her to a kill box. There is some weight given to the theory that he may have been grappling with everything, as the gas station was in the opposite direction to the barn, but we just don't know for definite. Jack is a slave to El Cuco, similar to how Tracy Powell was, and we see that Ralph's refusal to believe anything is what's holding the case back. Ralph is pretty much standing in the way of everything, and it's time he either gets with the program or gets out of the way. He goes to his therapist and tries to find someone who is on his side about it, and Holly has a nightmare at the end that she was murdered by Jack, which could indicate that El Cuco is in her head and haunting her. It is possible that Jack could now be hunting her, as we did see that he was alive and making his way back to town. Ralph needs to get into the investigation ASAP, otherwise she could become someone that El Cuco torments next, and whatever happens, something needs to change. From next week's episode, we can see that Jack is now out and about killing people with his rifle. This indicates how far he has come, and what he is willing to do. There's a police manhunt out for him, so he'll have to do whatever he can to avoid the long arm of the law. The investigation seems to be making headway, as they brought Claude in for questioning, and are asking if he feels like something is fixated on him. Ralph isn't there, but as we know, he's slowly starting to open up, and this could also be cemented by his first encounter with El Cuco, which appears to be in his home. There's also a masked festival in which a child goes missing at. The person who looks to be escorting the boy away appears to be clawed on the surface, though his face is hidden behind a mask, but body-wise they look very similar. This could show that the outsider didn't have time to fully change its appearance, but as it was about 90% there, it's decided that it's close enough. Claude looks like he's been locked up, and the fight for his freedom will likely be what concludes the season. There's lots of things going on, and overall, this was another gripping episode, and with just three left, I can't wait to see what happens. Now obviously, I'd love to hear your thoughts on episode 7, and what you've thought of the season so far. Comment below and let me know, and if you enjoyed this video, then please drop a thumbs up, and make sure you check out our entire breakdown of the season so far. We've got a big playlist of a ton of videos on the show, so it's definitely worth checking out if you want to know more. If you want to support the channel from as little as 99 cents a month, then please click the join button below. You get access to content early, and can also suggest video topics and breakdowns. If you want to come chat to us after the show, either follow us at DefinitionYT, or click the Discord link in the description below. Every month we give away free movies to people who are subscribed to the channel, and this month you can win the Infinity Saga box set, and all you have to do is comment on a video and make sure you sub with notifications on. The winner is going to be chosen at random on the 15th of March, so best of luck to everyone who takes part.
This is a channel for people who are never missing television, so if that's the kind of thing you like, you need to subscribe to Definition. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. You've been the best and I'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.